I just got back from a nearly two month long trip to South Korea and a road trip across the United States. And I did it all with Push 3. I want to thank Ableton for sponsoring this video and providing me with a Push 3 unit. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a full comprehensive understanding of what it's like to live with Push 3 making music. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So I'm starting off choosing a sample from my library. This is from a sample pack by Blank Forms. And I'll choose a one note melodic sample to start. And that sample was automatically loaded into a simpler instrument, which is just Ableton's simple sampler. And as a result of that, we can tweak various parameters of the sound, including the amp envelope. So let's extend the release on this sound so we get a nice, really long keyboard sound. I'd like to add some effects to this sound as well. So I'm going through the audio effects and we're going to add my basic audio processing rack, which is a rack I actually built on desktop Ableton Live um, well before the Push 3 ever came out. But I was able to import it onto Push 3 and it just gives me some really easy, handy control, basic things you would adjust for many instruments or many different types of audio. It's got a built-in compressor, an EQ, as well as a reverb. So having this already made and imported into my Push 3, which it's just comprised of an EQ8, an Ableton stock reverb, and an Ableton stock compressor, uh, it makes the workflow really fast to dial in the sound I want. Next, I'd like to add a delay. Specifically, we'll be adding a ping pong delay. And for one final effect, I'll be adding pitch loop 89, which is sort of like a granular delay that I've really enjoyed using over the past few months. Now we have this really ethereal ambient sound. It's time to add a drum kit. So I'm going to press the plus button, add a new MIDI track, and let's choose from the pre-made drum kits. That one seems like a good starting point, but it's actually easy for us to swap in and out samples from an existing kit or even an empty kit. So by selecting that snare pad, I'm able to go into my user library and find a sound that I've imported onto Push 3 and replace it. Now, one thing I will say about this process that you'll see as we go to replace another sound is when I go to select another pad, it jumps us back up to the top of the file structure. So I have to navigate back into that folder that I want to choose from uh, instead of it automatically landing back on that folder again and choosing a sample from the same folder. Um, I hope that they can fix this potentially in a firmware update because it makes this workflow just a little slower than it needs to be. And as you can see, we're just swapping custom samples into this existing drum rack. Uh, and being that these samples are now in a drum rack, we have easy access to changing some parameters of these sounds like the transposition of each sample, for instance. I think that's sounding pretty good, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and dial in my basic audio processing here. I'm gonna shave off some highs to get more of that lo-fi sound, and then I'll go ahead and do some mixing within the drum rack. Back to the synth sound, I think I kind of know the direction I want to go in or what type of beat I want to make. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do tap tempo. I'm going to find generally what tempo I want to be working at, and I can use the tempo knob to get us to a more round number and actually get that number a little higher to 78 BPM. We're going to turn on the metronome. I'm going to switch to the click metronome sound because it's a little less abrasive in my opinion. And then finally, we're going to record our first loop with this synth sound that we already made. So 
So I'm fairly happy with that idea. And now that we've got it looping, I'm gonna go and look at the notes in the clip. I think pushes screen and navigation around this clip mode is really, really good. I can shorten the loop, set a different start point, and I can also go through and select individual notes, multiple notes, or select all. This is gonna come in useful here because I've set the loop start point to be further in, and I wanna make sure the notes at the beginning of the loop, or at least the notes that are meant to be at the beginning of the loop, are starting on the downbeat, or at least after the downbeat. So I'm not hard quantizing this musical idea. So the process I'm doing here, and you're actually seeing me kind of learn how this jog wheel works in real time, is I'm just going through and selecting those first notes of the phrase, and I'm nudging them just a hair to get them across that starting line so I can make sure that the sound is going to come through at the start of the phrase. I'm just going through and doing that for each note. Even though we don't have a keyboard and mouse, it's actually really easy to navigate around the notes in these clips and select multiple of them. I'm nudging them right now, but we could also adjust the note length as well as the velocity and of course the pitch, among other things. But now I've got that loop sounding how I want it to sound. Let's go ahead and record a drum loop. It's actually going to take me a few takes to do this, so let me walk you through the process. I start by recording the first clip, mess up, and I hit undo, which isn't actually undoing the clip that I recorded. I mistakenly thought that it was. It's actually undoing the last note I recorded. Eventually, I'm going to start to realize this, and I actually come up with like a better system for doing this. So instead of hitting undo, because I'd have to hit it multiple times to undo the previous recording, I actually go into the session view and I use the delete button to just delete that clip. Now I can go in and record another loop. Now I've got that loop recorded, but it wasn't perfect. Gonna wanna do another take. So instead of hitting undo, I'm gonna reach over and hit delete. Let's do one more take and let's set fix length recording so that it automatically records two bars instead of me having to punch in and punch out. This makes for a much more fluid looping process. I can hit the quantize button here, but I can also dial back the quantize amount. So it sounds just a bit more human, but I still lock in some of those hits. If we look at the clip view, we can see those notes adjust in real time to make sure nothing adjusts overly adjusted or, you know, didn't adjust enough. Next, I've loaded up a new synth pad sound and we're going to record a loop of that. I think that sounds really cool. And also sliding between notes feels super natural over those pads. Let's add some effects to this sound, including a side chain compressor, which is something I use a lot in my sound, getting a ducking sound from the kick. I wanted to get used to this process of setting it up on push and it's actually pretty easy. From within the compressor, we can find the source for the side chain, which can be from somewhere else in the project. So I select my drum kit, specifically the kick drum, and make sure side chain is turned on. And then we bring down the threshold and I'm getting that visual feedback on the synth pad track and I can see that kick signal coming in. I do wish there was a way to copy that side chain compressor to other tracks so I don't have to set it up on each track every time with the routing, like copy and paste. Here I'm going to duplicate the scene and we're going to create an alternate drum loop that just has no kick in it. I'm just going to do that right within the step sequencer. I'm just going to press the notes that are on to turn them off. So now we have a drum loop with no kick. 
and I'm recording some bass. But what's that? A battery low warning. Let's remember that. Let's hold that thought for a moment. Finally, let's add some bells on top of this. And I kind of like how this beat is coming along. I'm getting used to the push workflow. And I'm about to record one more loop of these bells when suddenly... Push's battery died. More on that in a moment. In this traditional Hanok, there were a couple of really cool wind chimes. This wood wind chime sounds really cool, so I decided to record it with my field recorder. And there was one more that was made of shells. Thought both of these could be used in recording, so we're going to sample into the Push 3 now. And this looks like it's inside, but it's actually outside, just above 80 degrees. I was curious how Push would perform in the heat, so we'll see. Oh, and if you're wondering, before Push's battery ran out, it did an autosave of our previous project and we didn't lose anything. I was happy to see that. So the process here, which you're not going to be able to hear for the first minute of this, is because I'm using the field recorder to sample into Push. So I'm just going to hit play on my field recorder and record those different sounds into Push as audio clips. One from the wooden wind chime, one from the shell wind chime. And now that we have those, we can actually convert them, if we want, to a simpler instrument. So that's actually the sound of the wood wind chime as an instrument now. Not sure how I'm going to use that yet. So I jumped over to the shell sound, which I think will just make a nice texture. I'm just going to loop that as audio. Nothing too fancy happening there. It's just a texture layered into the track. But after doing that, I jump back to the wooden wind chime, and I've got more of an idea of a simple rhythmic idea for that. Quick note here, I know that the pads look blasted and white right now, but in person I can actually see them totally fine. It's just a matter of wanting you to be able to see the screen from the camera. Um, in non-direct sunlight, the pads look pretty good. I'll point out a moment later where the sunlight was actually interfering with how I could see the pads. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. So I realized that I could potentially record in real time into the push using my field recorder as a microphone. So check this out. Let's record a vocal in. Now that I've got that loop recorded in, I'm going to go ahead and name this track Voice. From there, we're going to freeze and flatten it. This way, I can turn that voice into an instrument, once again converting to simpler. So that was in real time, directly into the Push 3 sampling in. So I think that that's pretty cool, a cool workaround for sampling into Push with a mic. So in the next step of our Push 3 journey here, I'd like to try sampling in an external synth on this rooftop. And this is a situation where, like I mentioned before, the pads are quite difficult to see because the sun is coming right over my shoulder and I can't really see the pads, but I never really had a problem seeing the screen in any situation. So just a note there. We're gonna be sampling in my Lemon Drop synth. It's just a small granular synthesizer. We're gonna power the synth with Push 3's USB-A port. We're going to run MIDI out from the push 
into the lemon drop. And then of course, we're going to run the audio from the lemon drop into one of Live's inputs. And once that is all configured properly, we can set up what's known as an external MIDI instrument in Live. And we're fully sending MIDI and receiving audio in Ableton Live. So once I've got a musical idea I like, it's important that we freeze this track. Because remember, Push is just sending MIDI out to the lemon drop and we're just hearing the lemon drop play. We want to capture that recording. So here what's happening is Live is actually playing through the musical idea, sending the MIDI out to lemon drop while simultaneously recording the audio so that we actually have this idea captured. And I'm pretty satisfied with that additional layer from the lemon drop, and I like layering in the bells even more on top as a melody. But let's take a moment and switch gears here. I want to show you a different beat I made with Push 3. Now, I think this guitar sound is great. It's from the guitar and bass pack from Ableton. But just listen to this bend really quick. Being able to do that on a pad instrument is something I'm not really used to. Having that on push, just it just feels next level. I can get this really natural guitar bend sound. I love that. Now, in case you're curious, this isn't just a one take performance. You can tell because the camera keeps moving around. I don't have 12 cameras. But what I do is I record each individual idea and loop them. Then I combine those individual loops, just like we've been recording previously in the video, uh, into an arrangement. Now I did this, of course, by sending my project over from Push 3 and syncing it with my laptop. From there, I can take all these loops that I've just recorded and arrange them into the track that you're hearing right now. So from a video and music making perspective, it actually fits my workflow pretty well. Does it feel good to be able to make music under a great sunset like this? Having the Ableton Live workflow in a standalone machine is a game changer for traveling and going out, making music, getting inspired by the environment. And on that note, we're actually going to leave South Korea and it's time to embark on a cross-country road trip across the United States. Now I think this is somewhere in Utah or Colorado or something. I've just got push set up and we're going to start working on a new beat in the van. After I lay down that initial melody, I end up back on that same guitar sound from the previous beat. I just think it's a lot of fun playing guitar sounds on Push 3. The cool thing about making music on the road or on a road trip is that when you stop and you end up at an amazing beautiful vista like this, you can stop and take it all in and make some music here. I'd say this is another instance where the sun is coming straight at me and it was a little difficult to see the pads. I can usually always see the root note though. Anyway, time for the drums. I love 
making music on the go, being inspired by all the environments that I visit. But after this long trip, I was pretty happy to be bringing Push 3 home and getting it set up here at this pretty much dollless setup that I've made here. What's cool here is my Yamaha Reface CP has USB out. So I'm going to use it as a USB MIDI controller for the Ableton Push. You can see the notes lighting up on there as I play notes on the Reface. But I'm also going to run the audio into the Push. And as you start to hear those ambient tones, you can hear that I'm actually running the Reface CP through the hologram pedal and into Ableton Push 3. Make these really dreamy ambient pads with this combination. But that was fun. I've laid down some ambient sounds. Let's actually create a chain for guitar. I would really like to play guitar into this thing. And I've been using Ableton's amp, cab, and even pedal combo for a while. I think we can get some really good guitar sounds out of this. Now starting to layer that on top of the ambient dreamy pads, I think something is really coming together. Previously along this journey, I had been thinking about push as a writing tool, as a way to start tracks. Here I started to really think about it and its performance potential. I could be doing guitar looping and recording different sounds from the Reface CP. And there's a lot of potential here and I can't wait to craft a few looping performances with Push 3. This is obviously a totally different genre than we had been making previously in the video, but I am having just a great time jamming with it. And there's a certain workflow here that I think kind of feeds into it. And I think it again goes into having Ableton Live in a standalone device. It's something that I've been waiting for for a very long time. And to finally have it here, I can tell I'm going to be making so much music on and performances on Push 3. If you made it to this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I would love to hear what you think about Push 3 in the comments down below. Thank you again to Ableton for sponsoring this video and providing me with a Push 3. I can't wait to show you more of what I do with Push 3 here on this channel, so make sure you subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. And shout out to all the members, the people who support the channel month after month by hitting the join button you want to join today, you can become a member and get access to members only workshops, free sample pack downloads, join our discord and submit music for track review streams and other fun things like that. But for now, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this journey. This has been Tedro. Have a good one.